Now that we've corrected the gradients in the three images, we're going to calibrate the color in the RGB image and enhance the H-alpha signal. We'll calibrate the color using SPCC as usual. We select the RGB filters, the quantum efficiency curve, and lastly, an area of the sky background. In this image, we don't really have any sky background, so all we can do is select one of the darkest areas. Now we apply the process. And we reapply the auto stretch. Remember, after the color calibration, the RGB channels must be linked. Now we're going to enhance the H-alpha using pixel math. We're going to enhance it in the red channel and leave the green and blue as they are. We therefore need a different equation for each color channel, so let's uncheck this box. In the green and blue channels, we type $t, which means the target image. This means that Pixel Math will put the target image in these two channels. In other words, it won't do anything to it. In the red channel, we're going to add the target image multiplied by a value k plus the h-alpha image multiplied by 1 minus k. We can use k to configure the weight of the r and h-alpha images. As the sum of the weights of the two images will always be 1, we won't saturate the brightest pixels in the image. We can specify the value of k in this tab. For example, with a k value of 0.5, we'll combine 50% of the R image with 50% of the H alpha. We can also set the value of k in the same tab as the R equation using this expression. This way, we have everything here in the same field. Let's try an equal mix of the two images first. The color balance in the resulting image is distorted. If we use this equation, we need to reapply the color calibration because we're generating an R image with a sensitivity similar to the one in this graph where the R transmission curve has a very pronounced peak around the H alpha. So now we're going to apply this pixel math equation to the main view and apply the same SPCC process to recalibrate the color. We can use this technique to regulate the H alpha enhancement. If we go back, we can see the before and after. Remember that when we go back and forward in the history, we need to reapply the auto stretch to display the image correctly. Now all we need to do is modify the value of K to find the right weights for the R and H alpha channels. Let's try with 0.15 for the R channel and 0.85 for the H alpha. This is with the enhanced H alpha. And here's the RGB image without the H alpha. As well as enhancing the H alpha in the R channel, we also need to enhance it in the L channel. This is because the lightness component of a color image is calculated using 22% of the red channel. So, if we enhance the nebula in the red channel, it also needs to be partially enhanced in the L image 
so that it is proportional to the lightness component of the color image. This is easier to understand if we delinearize the two versions of the color image. On the right, we have the RGB image, and on the left, we have the H-alpha image with RGB. Let's delinearize the two images using STF and histogram transformation. Now, if we look at the lightness component of the two images, we can see that the nebula is brighter in the composite image than in the color image. If we superimpose the two images with pixel math, it's easy to see the change in the lightness over the nebula. This is the RGB image, and this is the RGB image with H-alpha. So, we need to combine the L image and the H alpha image in a way that gives us a lightness component similar to that of the color image. We're going to apply the same pixel math formula to the L image. This is using 50% of the L image. This is using 75% and this is using just 25%. This is the result without H-alpha, and this is the result with the H-alpha added. These brighter areas of the nebula are a little brighter here. This will help give more volume to the nebula because it will have more brightness tones, as we'll see later. But we need to make sure that the R-channel isn't saturated when we do the LRGB composition. Although these areas are a little brighter, we can probably control this by applying a dynamic range compression. Let's apply it to the L image. And now the L image and the RGB image are both ready to be delinearized and combined.